uh, we're going to continue with uh, you, Professor Mark Anthony, and uh, you're quite uh, 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 attested uh, that uh, this, of course, uh, is a thought-provoking uh, uh, program, uh, like uh, we heard uh, the Rwandan leadership underlined. Uh, and at one particular moment, he said uh, that it's true that uh, the world is recovering gradually uh, from the effect of uh, the COVID-19, but then there is still a huge disparity uh, when it comes to developing nations and developed nations. So now, but today we are looking at this very uh, important aspect, the, uh, uh, the debt distress of African countries. Can we have your own holistic uh, approach of uh, what uh, the uh, uh, debt distress is for developing nations, especially in uh, the 21st century as far as uh, the uh, uh, African uh, countries are concerned? Uh, I'll begin by actually uh, elucidating that uh, the fact that my beloved sister there just mentioned that debt in itself is not neither bad nor good uh, actually makes a, a point. She, she made a, a serious point there. The funny thing about debt is that debt on its own actually does not uh, create any negative uh, impact in a, in an economy as well as creates no positive impact in an economy except the actors who are actually borrowing uh, get to uh, become either effective in implementing the projects that they have they went collecting the debt for or misuse the money that had been borrowed. Uh, when it gets to a point where, as a nation, you are unable to service your loans, then it becomes terrible. You, if you went for a debt, then you are unable to service it. There's a problem. We want to look at this issue from two uh, directions. I want to look at it from two directions. First, I want to say that uh, the bodies that actually give these loans have a serious problem when it comes to Africa. Like you heard Kagame mentioning, the rate at which African nations take loans is different from what uh, Europeans, uh, in fact, the different Europeans and the Western nations actually, uh, uh, the interest rate might differs a lot. Uh, when African nations go to take loans, especially from uh, these uh, private creditors, because most of those who actually place a yoke on the neck of Africa are these Western private creditors. They, when they go taking loans from them, they give loans at a very high interest rate. For example, China, which people complain that is the highest uh, uh, creditor to Africa, the highest that gives loans to Africa, actually is not. The West is. And when we look at the rates at which they give, I just mentioned the, 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 those private creditors, the Western private creditors, they give loans two times higher and, and, and the interest, and the interest two times higher, which is problematic in itself. And if you look at your question, you're talking of balancing responsibility. Absolutely. If you see, that is the reason why today there is a discussion on the table which is looking for ways to tell China to follow the rules that were set by the IMF, that were set by the World Bank. And you, if I may remind you, the World Bank and IMF are post-war financial uh, institutions which were actually established for the purpose of restructuring the West, rebalancing the economic situation of the West, not that of the world. And it was manned and actually done by the U.S. 
And that is why even to today, from the creation of this IMF and the World Bank, the World Bank is, has had at its head Westerners, particularly from the United States. The IMF has had, have been having uh, 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 leaders at its head, individuals from Europe, from among the G7 uh, countries. So if you look at it, you realize that it is majorly a Western issue. And they are the ones who determine the rules. They are the ones who run the affairs. So you cannot ask the world to believe that these banks were created, these financial institutions were created to help the world, was created to actually build Europe. And that is why they would do everything possible to pull the blanket on them. And look at it. China came as a, a should, I, should I say, a distorter. It came to distort a lot of things. And so when they started doing these, the eyes of Westerners are actually getting up. And they are, wow, these guys have come and they are doing, they are destabilizing everything. And now they are tending to ask China, you need to play by the rules. Rules that were developed by who? China cannot play by the rules because you are the ones who set them. And then, who are those that have the measured decision powers in those houses? It is Europe. So where is Africa? Africa remains at the end of just receiving and paying high. Because even though we say that we say that debt is not a problem, but the way you give the debt to somebody matters. If I give you a debt, a, a loan, and you are supposed to pay, might be seven times or ten times more than another person, then there's a problem. You are not balanced. So the way this money is lend, loan, uh, loan to Africans is different from the way it is loaned to Europeans. And so we need to also get to that point. We crack that down. Then we need to come back, the second aspect of it. We are looking at the leaders who go to take loans. When Africans want to go take loans, what are the projects that they have on the ground? When they go to China, China likes playing with loans that are on small, small projects. They don't like going with big projects. And when they come in, they, most of the thing with the Chinese people is that they don't want to put things written down because they have an intention which is not also a good intention. So at the end of the day, Africa keeps on suffering from both the Chinese, from the hands of both the Chinese and as well as the, the Europeans. We remain those two to, 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 to suffer. So that's why leaders, when they are going for this debt, the question is, what projects are they going? How, how feasible are the projects? And secondly, what bargaining power do they go with when they want to take loans? Because you don't just go, maybe because you need a loan to solve a particular problem, you use the name of a project in a country, you take the debt, and that's why most of these loans are swindled. That's why when this money enters most nations in Africa, they disappear. Do you know by the end of 2020, Zambia as a country had only had gone into complete, had sunk. Absolutely, yeah. Zambia had sunk in debt. And the way to relieve them is, <laughs> I don't think uh, relieving uh, uh, Zambia from debt is just by canceling their debt. Because when you cancel their debt, what will be the effect tomorrow? The funny thing is that the Chinese do not cancel debt. The Chinese do not offer debt reliefs. And that is where there is a problem. But are we supposed to be relieved from debt or we are supposed to be able to service our debt? And so we have a problem with the way African leaders run their countries. They run it as private properties which permit them to collect money and use the money which is meant for the development of the continent, the development of the country, for their private issues. Or even if it's not a private issue, the money that is placed on the table never goes for the project that the money went for. That is why you, there's a lot of corruption in Africa which needs to be dealt with. 
if we have to talk about being able to balance this issue, we need to deal with corruption in Africa. We need to deal with corrupt leaders. We need to get to a place where we pull this, uh, we, we also balance uh, 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 the rules that permit a nation to take loans.